Welcome back to another wonderful episode of Coach's Kingdom. This is going to be our offensive basics video. Um, this is just going over the bare bones basics of an offense, each position, kind of what their basic responsibilities are. Um, Brian, do you want to start out wide receiver? Yeah, I can. So, uh, typically, in, in this formation right here, we're going to go over formations later in another video, but this is uh, going to be called an eye formation. Uh, just looks like an eye, you know. Uh, Quite literally, here's your dot yeah. for the eye. And <laughs> yeah, you know, straight line. Yeah, it's, it's uh, high so it's pretty self-explanatory on the formations as far as uh, offense goes. But um, yeah, so a lot of times, and in, in really any formation, your receivers are going to be running routes. So you know, you'll have a streak, anything like that. We'll go over more receiver um, receiver jobs later, but. You're I mean, good. it's pretty much your... you're blocking or you're running a route for a receiver. Um, a lot of times you can see them go in motion, uh, which is just, you know, before the play, before the, you know, uh, quarterback snap the ball, he's making the receiver move into a different position and either running a route off of that, running a, what we call a jet sweep uh, or any type of, you know, motion as far as the receiver's concerned. Uh, big thing for the receivers. You see a lot of this called in football today. Any football that you're watching, whether it's high school on TV, college, or pro, um, they make this mistake all the time. That receiver right there. I made the mistake. He has to be off the ball. Yes, you sure did. That receiver one right of our, there. One of our very own coaches yeah. made the mistake. So, Goodness gracious. If you have a tight end on your side and he is on the football, that receiver has to be off the football. He cannot be on the ball before the ball is snapped. He cannot be on the line of scrimmage. He has to be behind it. So, like, so here's your center. This is on the ball. We haven't really talked about that yet. Yeah. But if you're on the ball, you're lined up in this line. So, looking at just this half of the field, you've got a tight end on. So, this would be your number one and then your two. Right? So he's if he's on the ball, he's going to be off because if he is, you're over, you're shadowing him, and he cannot go out for a route. And backside, this receiver has to be on the ball. Uh, you have to have, I believe, it is seven guys at all times on the football. It cannot be any more, and it cannot be any less. It has to be seven guys on the football. If it's eight, that's an illegal procedure. Mm -hmm. If it's Six. And That's an illegal like procedure. Something you see, you don't see it as frequently, but you also see it from time to time. Um, sometimes for your offensive line, they line up in this kind of wedge deal because um, there's a there's a little yeah. gray area. Um, the guard or the tackle get a little too far back, and so they're in the backfield. So you've got too many, too little on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, as a former tackle, I've only been called on that one time. Uh, it was not <laughs> a fun penalty. Um, no. Uh, but it was not a fun penalty. So, uh, you know, coaches get into you pretty hard if you're on the offensive line and you make that mistake. If he, this tackle right here, is a little bit off the ball, mm -hmm. that right there is a legal procedure. Um, if tight end is on the ball and you have a receiver on the ball, that tight end is considered a blocker only. He cannot run a route. If he does, that's an illegal shift. So there's a lot of there's a lot of the cut yeah. and dry little minutia things. Now you can also shift out of this, yep. which is a little bit more complicated. That would send him back, and usually in motion that way, um, which would back him off the ball. Right, yeah, you'll see three guys move at he one time. Step up to the ball, yep. right? So these there's definitely a little little things that change from here to there for the offense that they've got to be real careful. Yeah, so uh, moving on from the receiver, you have the tight end. Uh, like we said, he's typically on on the football. And uh, you can see him do exactly what a receiver does. He's just a bigger receiver. Typically, he's your 6'7", uh, Rob Gronkowski. Travis uh, Kelsey. You know, Travis Kelsey, Tony or he Gonzalez. could be your uh, – pretty much extra receiver out there like George Kittle. So He's your hybrid in, in between a wide receiver and an offensive lineman. That's yep. Absolutely. Exactly. So uh, he can run a route, he can block, he can do just about anything from that position that a receiver can do at their position. Now while we're talking about hybrids in between offensive linemen and uh, something else, go ahead and cover fullback. So fullback, uh, right now with Dallas, what they do is they just put an extra 
offensive lineman in there at fullback. Right, as basically the fullback is guard. yeah essentially being phased out at this point. Uh, but your heavy running teams like Green Bay, Tennessee, uh, they will have a fullback. So your fullback, yeah, there you go. Your fullback is essentially your uh, running back protector. He is the offensive lineman designated to protect the running back at all times. The offensive linemen have a pact to protect the quarterback and the running back if he's running the football. Well, the football or the fullback, his only job is this man is, right is here is making sure this halfback gets a clear hole through the offensive line or on a toss or anything like that. The halfback's job is the same thing. So he take the football and run with it wherever your job is. So it could be an inside zone. It could be an outside zone. It could be a toss. It could be a screen. If if he's going out for a route, there's very few routes that running backs run out of this formation. But if he's going out for a route in a separate formation, um, typically you're not going to have a fullback in that formation with him. If you do, that fullback will also run a route, but it'll be a you know you don't really see fullbacks go deep. It's either uh, <laughs> it's he'll either run a route or he'll come up and fill. For that tight end who is going to be out in route. Yes. So typically, and I mean, He's an it's extra very, blocker. Yep. very rarely do you see a fullback in a passing situation. And the only one you really see in the NFL nowadays is Kyle Yuschek, uh for the, for the uh, 49ers. So um, he is a beast. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Your quarterback is right here. Um, everybody knows what a quarterback's job is: pass football when it's called for, hand it off when it's called for. Sometimes you're running with it when it's called for. So, um, Carson yep. Wentz. Yeah, Carson. Uh, yeah, Doug Prescott. Uh, yeah, so uh, as a former offensive lineman that didn't play very much offense, I'm gonna hand it off to the two guys who typically played offensive line the more more than anybody else. Absolutely. So uh, right now you can see I've thrown this big bracket right here. Um, this is what they call the tackle box. So this is this is your offensive line box. Okay. So you you'll start from the right hand side here where I'm at. You've got tackle, guard, center, guard, and tackle going right to left. I'm just going to butt in here real quick. The quarterback, as, as Caleb was saying, this is the box. So if the quarterback is inside the pocket or inside this box. We're going to have to cut that. I was getting feedback when the marker was on the table. Restart what you said. Jump okay. in when you jumped in. Remember? Okay. Slide yes. Okay. Okay. Jesus Christ, we're still getting feedback. What is the issue? Is either this cable on the back side, maybe? Yeah, it might be it. Do you want the guy back here to hold it? Try it out there. Keep swing your microphone around. Does that work? Uh. That was why. Loose. Loose. Hopefully okay. another video front. Tell us where to go. Action. Okay. All right. So basically, you see where I've drawn this big bracket right here. We call that the tackle box. Going from right to left, you'll notice that there are du there are duplicates here. Uh, you've got your tackle, your guard, your center, your guard, and your tackle, and together they form what they call the tackle box. Yes, and I'm going to butt in real quick by saying this quarterback, if this is a pass down where he is going to pass the football to a receiver, or tight end, or running back, uh, or fullback, um, he can throw the football inside what's called the box. It's five yards uh, back, over, and up. So five yards, and it can't pass the line of scrimmage. Uh, so within this tackle box right here, well, I have a marker. I should probably use it. Uh, within this tackle box right here, the quarterback is free to throw it wherever he wants to, except for one place. If he is in this right here, and this receiver is downfield right here, and he decides he's getting rushed by a defensive tackle or defensive end, and he's got to throw the football away, which is essentially throwing it out of bounds, and he's inside this tackle box, that's intentional grounding. If he throws it this way and it goes out of bounds where there's no receiver or running back in the area, that's intentional grounding right here. If he is outside of this box and is rolled out and there is no one that he's throwing to and he throws it out of bounds, 
since he's outside the tackle box, as long as it makes it past this line of scrimmage right here, as long as his pass makes it past this line of scrimmage right here, then it is considered a throwaway, a complete pass. So this right here, you know, would be a penalty, a 15-yard penalty. Absolutely. So these five guys right here, they really have one job and one job only. Blocking. Pretty much. Pick a guy with a different colored jersey on. This is how you describe it. Guy with a different colored jersey, and you make that jersey red somehow. Okay? All right. We're going to start off with this right tackle right here. Your right tackle is going to be a run blocker. A majority of people on your right side are going to be heavy into run blocking because they're not having to protect this quarterback's backside. So your quarterback, especially if he's right-handed, which most people are, um, is going to be able to see anything coming from right here, which is why your your least pass block kind of people are going to be on that right side of the line. Absolutely, and that goes that goes as well for the guard. They're going to be really, uh, really both your guards are going to be more run heavy. Um, they've got to be mobile. Probably some of your quickest guys on the offensive line because we do have a thing we call pulling. Whereas you'll see as Michael's drawn right here, he will pull and what we call kick out the corner or whoever's out here on the end of the line of scrimmage, so that the running back can fill right in behind and take off running. So there are numerous situations where guards pull. And each and every one of them are very important, and we'll get into all that in a later video. Um, center is probably the most important job because he's where the play starts. If you don't get the ball back to the quarterback, then that's a fumble, and you, you ain't going to be starting no offensive plays with a fumble. Unless so, it's a fumble ruski. Unless it's a fumble ruski. That's possible, and that's an Oklahoma thing. You look that up on Nebraska. Google. In Nebraska. Check, look that up on Google. Um. But yeah, then we so that's your right side to the center side of the line, right? So let's divide the line of right there. So now you've got your left guard, which is what I played in high school. Um, so basically, your job is to a protect the quarterback's blind side a little bit, but b you're mainly here to help out your center and move up to linebacker. That's going to be your main job is blocking and secondary blocking. Now, once again, he is also going to be able to pull. Your guards are going to be your offensive linemen that always wanted to play fullback and running back because they can run. They are a little quicker. They are more mobile, but they never got that shot. Here's here's the difference between a guard and a fullback. The, guard, or the, the guards cannot handle the football. The fullback can at least somewhat hold the football because there are a handful of plays where the fullback gets the ball. But basically, when you've got a fullback in, you have a total of three guards on the field at any given time. Now, this left tackle is the most important position he is also on the entire field. Typically, the highest paid player, or highest paid offensive lineman on the field at all times. Now, on the that roster. is because if they drop into pass blocking, which is what he is, he is definitely a pass blocker. He is to protect your quarterback's backside. He is the centerpiece of all of that. Um, if he messes up, who knows? I mean, your quarterback could be down and out for a long time. You saw what happened to Tua. Joe yeah, Theisman. exactly. Joe Theismann. Lawrence Taylor was just too much. Exactly. We are going to erase some of this and change the formation just because different positions do come in in different formations. Jeez, uh, I've never looked, I've never ran this before. Can you drop a wing tee? Yes, you have ran this before. I've ran it, but I haven't ran it since seventh grade. Yeah, and while Caleb's erasing this, I uh, just uh, shed a little bit more light on uh, my favorite offensive line position, the left tackle. Um, as Michael said, the most important offensive lineman, you know. Um, he absolutely is the blind side. They made a movie about it for Michael Orr. You know, it's called blind side. So, I mean, he, he protects the quarterback's blind side, typically like Michael said. You know, quarterback's right-handed. He's not really looking, you know, to his left a whole lot. So, um, here, I'm going to do it with the black marker. I can see it better here. It's fine. You got five. Yep, you got it. Uh, typically here, this is what we call wing T offense, okay? I've got to say something. Run, Zajet, sweep. Yeah. So, a lot of times, that's what you're seeing. 
Georgia Tech used to run it. Army, I believe Navy. They still run it. Navy and Army still run it. I know Army does so, for a fact. The wing tee is a very outdated style of yes, football. Yes, it is. This, this has been phased out for so, so long, Coach Hanna. No <laughs> one needs to run this anymore. No one should have ran this 10 years ago. It's done. Let it die. I will say, Hendersonville ran it and just made it to the third round of the playoffs. Yeah. There, there are ways to update and adapt the wing tee to be more futuristic, if you will. But um, you'll it see just very outdated. Yeah, you'll see a second... W here. This is not a wide receiver, okay? This is pretty much another running back on the field. Um, this will not be a running back. This will be a fullback. So this is not like your eye formation fullback. This guy is your big bruiser that can actually run the football. Typically <laughs> what you would call a third down back. Yeah. Somebody for short yardage that can take a hit and, and put a wall upon. Yeah. If you look up Mike Tolbert. That is exactly what he was uh, in the NFL. He b- was just able to adapt into a new style of football. Um, unfortunately, this offense is very, very old. We have found new ways to be productive passing the football because this has become a more passing league, and this is more of a running formation. Draw so the jet sweep for everybody. You will not, yeah. So the jet sweep here is a big one right here. The quarterback will typically bring him in motion. And right about here, snap the football to hand it off to the receiver going to the strong side. Typically, this is something you see Tyreek Hill do quite a bit. And you see your middle school coaches do this. It works a whopping 0.002% of the time, but he will run it on first, second, third, (laughs) and fourth down. Thank you, Coach Hannah. Yeah, so also what you'll see off of this before you erase it, what you'll see off of this When you have this jet sweep and you've ran it a number of times, like Michael said, typically what a coach will do after that is fake the handoff to this receiver going in motion and give it to the fullback up the middle in what What we call a trap play. What a smart coach will do. Yeah, what we call a trap play, which is where Caleb's position at left guard will pull and kick immediately. Take one step and boom, turn to the line of scrimmage. A one-step bucket step is what it's called because you're running down, so you've got your center is going to take the nose this way. Your guard is going to hit the nose and climb the linebacker. You are going to kick out the tackle, and your tackle is going to be out on the tight end and the tight end double team here to the other backer. Yep, and this is where uh, Caleb's position at left guard becomes the most important position on the football field. If this guard can get this block on the defensive tackle or defensive end or whoever's right here, this play typically will go for a 10-yard, if he can beat the linebacker, a 5-10 yard gain. This can be a successful type of offense. There you are, just don't see a whole lot no more. There are three prime blocks to the trap play. You've got this one right here on the tackle. And you've got your secondary blocks on both of your linebackers. One of these people has to come off and block that linebacker. If that does not happen, the play is done. Yep. So it is a whole offensive line thing except for this backside tackle. His one job is to turn and seal. And seal. (laughs) So so my favorite play as an offensive lineman right there. (laughs) Step and seal. Um, This right here, like we said, this isn't used much anymore, so a lot of times the only way you're going to see this is if you watch high school football on TV or if you watch um, watch NCAA. Is that it? What? Uh, Shotgun drawn slot receiver. Okay. I'll raise as much of this as possible. There you go. I'll go ahead and start over here. Yeah. So you'll all, notice all we have to cover is the slot receiver and then we're good. So what you're seeing now is we're changing things up a little bit to a new style of offense that you see quite frequently in the NFL. I had to get under your there. No more wing. wing back. Oh, sorry. Yep. All right. So we have a slot receiver. <laughs> And your slot receiver is right here because he lines up in the slot between the offensive line and the other wide receiver. This is oftentimes going to be your super fast, short guy. Uh, He can get 
get open really fast. He's going to be your check down. He's going to be on your uh, more successful, smaller routes. Your one routes. guy, yeah. One guy that we, you hear us talk about a lot when we talk about the Rams is Cooper Cup. This is his position on the football field. Tyreek Hill. This is his position on the football field. Wes Welker. Yep. So they they are very successful wide receivers out here because they have done so well at being small, fast, figuring out how to get past the first down marker and make the catch. Uh, typically, these guys are only going to catch the football when it's a short breaking route. A lot of times, you're not seeing this wide receiver run a post or any type of seam because he'll draw the safety. So what you'll do is have him run a slant or an in, you know, which I just drew. I didn't really draw a slant, but or an out route right here. So we'll get more into route tree later, but that's typically what you'll see a, 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 a slot wide receiver run. Um, and we didn't go over why this is called shotgun. So you've got the five offensive linemen, the tight end. The quarterback is now taking the snap. He's not directly under the center anymore. He is actually back about five yards. Mm-hmm. There's there's two kinds of snaps in the NFL. You've got your under center snap where the center is basically handing it to the quarterback, and you've got your shotgun snap or your setback snap, yep. whereas he's five yards deep and that center is having to get it back there. Yeah. And there's uh, actually two formations real quick we're going to go over here. Uh, You've got your shotgun. Well, you've also got one more formation right here that's called the pistol. So the quarterback's about three to four yards away from the center, a little closer than a normal shotgun snap, um, which is why Caleb also called it a setback snap. Uh, and your running back will be directly behind the quarterback. Sometimes you'll see a fullback or a tight end in the backfield here. Um, but this is why it's called the pistol. Looks like a gun. That's, it looks that's like a hand really gun. it. Yeah. Uh, so those are the different types of formations, some of them on offense, but a majority of it is of what we went over in this video is the actual jobs of these positions on the football field, left tackle being the most important. So – uh, I'm just kidding, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So we will have soon uh, going over the formations on offense. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, uh, hit the little bell button uh, for the notifications. Ask any questions that you want to, anything that we didn't cover or anything that we might cover in the future. Um, and there we go, another episode of Coach's Kingdom. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. Mic drop.